We had a little NBA game that I was thinking of last night when I was watching the Nets and Clippers because we're all watching the Nets because we're trying to figure out how this is going to look. And offensively, it was stupid. The shot making from Durant, Harden, and then Kyrie in particular, just another reminder of what they're capable of. But we've also seen what they're capable of in a negative way defensively. The numbers in the fourth quarter off the charts on the offense and historically bad defensively. But they were really good, I thought, in moments defensively with just effort alone and it clogged the Clippers up and and look the Nets got a nice win against another really good team in the Clippers but then Paul George old 30-13 checked in afterwards and he said you know refs you know I gotta take more free throws I'm paraphrasing here a little bit and just let me be like man that's not like Paul George to say something like that like oh wait no it's exactly what Paul George does but Paul George you may not have known this is having kind of a career year not in total points scored but the assists are up in a way they've never been before. His playmaking has been incredible. And he's shooting from three. He's at 45% another career year. So whenever I hear anybody say like, oh, well, Paul George, are you paying attention to what he's doing this year? I'm like, of course I am. Watch a lot of hoops over here at the Casa. But none of it matters because this is the exercise. Which NBA players or which NBA teams? Because as I was thinking about all the Paul George stuff, none of it's going to matter until we see it actually happen in the playoffs, especially coming off of last year's collapse and other bad Paul George playoff games. And it's the same thing for the Milwaukee Bucks. Milwaukee Bucks are going to have a great record again. They're a better team this year with Drew Holiday. Their offense is even better this year than it was last year. But there are moments we see Giannis doesn't look entirely comfortable because they've changed some of their concepts. And, you know, no one cares. No one cares about what the Bucks look like other than Bucks fans because of what happened in the playoffs last year with them. So it's almost the same deal. Paul George doesn't matter until we see it in the playoffs. And the Milwaukee Bucks, who I actually think have fallen into this category of being really disappointing the last two years, but I don't think that's fair. They lost in six games to the Toronto Raptors two years ago. Yes, they had a 2-0 lead and they blew the series, but that was the Eastern Conference Finals. It wasn't like this disaster that we saw from them in the second round against the Miami Heat. So what other players remind us of NBA teams? Norman Powell, the Toronto Raptors. You're like, wait, Priscilla, Norman Powell? Yes, Norman Powell. Do you know about this guy? 15, 16 a game in the last couple of years. He's about 40% from three the last three years. He makes all of his free throws. Not a ton of rebounds and assists, but every time I watch Norman Powell, I'm like, you know what? He's pretty good. And I don't feel like anybody ever talks about him. And he's doing this usually always off the bench. And he always seems to be mad about stuff, but I like it because you know who else is mad? Pacers fans who feel like they've never gotten enough respect. Do you realize the Pacers through all of these moving pieces are only a game out of the number two seed in the Eastern Conference. They're doing this without Oladipo, who they traded for Carol Levert, who hasn't played, and TJ Warren's been hurt all the time. Every year we look at the Pacers and go, eh, whatever. They're probably not going to hold up that seating. Last year, oh, the Sixers are going to catch him. Didn't happen. I'm not telling you I'm picking the Pacers to get out of the East. I'm not picking Norman Powell to make an all-star team. All I'm telling you is the Norman Powell Pacer fans have been right more often than they've been wrong. D'Angelo Russell, what's his profile? Well, made an all-star team, scored 20 a game for three different franchises, basically a max contract. All these people seem to want him. Scoring nights where it's really impressive. Some of the playmaking, and you're like, man, this is great. Look how talented he is. What's our record again? Oh, we have the worst record in the West. What's going on? Well, the problem is, is that it looks good, and some of the stuff looks good, but the real results, the plus minus, Russell's arguably the worst plus minus of anybody who plays real minutes, especially somebody that's supposed to be a star. And that's kind of why they have that bad record. It reminds me of the Wizards because the Wizards on paper with that backcourt, Beal, 35 a game, Westbrook, a previous All-NBA just last season, which still seems a little weird. And you're like, all right, they can't be that bad, are they? Yeah, they're just as bad. Trey Young and the Houston Rockets. Now, see, I, you guys thought I was going to do that one. Trey's been better. Atlanta's been much better. And you know what? Houston's actually, is of the taping of this, a playoff team. Have you been paying attention to what the Rocks has been doing, putting together this roster on the fly? I doubt you have, but they're actually your eight seed today. Let's finish with everyone's favorite late-night rookie. That's Tyrese Halliburton, the Sacramento Kings. Now, Halliburton goes a little bit later uh, than maybe we thought he would, and now it's looking like a huge mistake. But when you come into a situation where there's a very dominant, ball-dominant, score-first point guard in De'Aaron Fox, that's not always easy, especially as a rookie. And the great thing about Halliburton is he can do all the stuff. He can play with the ball when Fox is out. He can play off the ball when they close games together. He hits open shots. He spreads the floor. He can initiate the offense. And that stuff's actually way more impressive than a rookie who's just handed the keys to a franchise and say, hey, look, take 20 shots. And maybe it's like the second or third year in, but you get the point. But it wasn't always an easy fit, but it's worked out. And it's like real. It feels real. And the Memphis Grizzlies feel real. They're the sixth seed. 
And this hasn't been easy. The toughest schedule so far. John Morant's missed half their games. They had five games postponed. Jaron Jackson hasn't played any games for him whatsoever. But every time I watch the Grizzlies, I go, you know what? I don't think this is going to be this fluctuating thing all the time. Now, I'm not picking the Memphis Grizzlies to win the West. But what I'm telling you is that it's real and it's better and it's been challenging. But don't be surprised if Halliburton ends up winning Rookie of the Year.